As you know, Ozempic and related injectable GLP-1 agonists are all the rage right now. We're hearing about this from celebrities, social media experts, doctors, pundits. You know, the general zeitgeist now is that overweight and obese people should be on these drugs probably forever. Just like when your blood pressure is high, you should be on your blood pressure lowering medication till the end of time. Oh, you have high cholesterol? Well, you should be on cholesterol lowering medication forever. Well, yeah. You know, I'm a big fan of better life through chemistry. You know, sometimes people need drugs. Sometimes you need an antibiotic. You know, sometimes you need a steroid or something like that. But should we really be on these compounds forever? Are there unintended harms? And could it be that there's natural ways to improve the very hormonal processes that can be dysregulated when we get overweight or become diabetic? Well, we have pretty good evidence now going back for at least 20 years that there are natural ways to mimic exactly what these very expensive medications and very popular medications are doing. We're talking about the GLP-1 hormone, and these are the agonists, semiglutai. There's the first one that came out in 2005 known as Bietta. There's many other compounds that I'm sure are on the market now. Most of these hitherto are injectable subcutaneous drugs, but there's now oral agents that are coming out. Well, it turns out that GLP-1 is one of 26 different gut hormones, okay? Your gastrointestinal tract is the first repository, the first contact point in your body with food. So it makes sense that your GI tract, we're talking about your small intestine mostly, releases hormones to tell your pancreas and to tell the rest of the body and metabolically active organs like your liver that food's coming in and we should help prepare the body to process in the post-meal window all these incoming nutrients. And so what I wanna focus on today is talk about three to four healthy ways that are natural to improve the activity of these gastrointestinal hormones known as incretins. Again, you're hearing about these because Ozempec is a pharmacologic analog of a natural hormone that your gut should make. And what do these incretins do and how can we improve their levels naturally with minimal side effects? That's where we're going in today's video. We're gonna draw upon several recent studies these are more narrative reviews, not randomized control trials, but I'll share with you uh, this one here. You can see it on the screen. Recent advances in understanding the role of glucagon-like peptide one. As I mentioned, there's 26 different gut hormones. I talk about these at length in my book, Belly Fat Effect, that I published in 2013. Not suggesting that you go run out and buy that book. If you're interested, fine. I'm working on a new book now. But this is one of many images that I include in that book, talking about how digestion and metabolism starts in the gut. And the gut is really important. And I, the reason why I got excited about writing this book, Belly Fat Effect, is in the early 2000s, bariatric surgery was very popular, right? We were hearing about all these people getting gastric bypass surgery, bariatric surgery. And I was really intrigued by the mechanism here. Why is this causing people to lose so much weight? You know, the thinking in the zeitgeist, the culture was, well, bariatric surgery works because you're limiting how much food people can eat. Well, it turns out that's only partially true. Bariatric surgery is effective in terms, and I'm not endorsing this, I'm not saying go out and get bariatric surgery, I'm just admiring the mechanism of action and thinking, well, could we mirror that or mimic that naturally? And it turns out we can. So what happens when you surgically manipulate the orientation of your gastrointestinal tract? You amplify the incretin response. That's part of it. So there's a lot of different types of, of gastric bypass or bariatric surgery, uh, gastric banding. There's all sorts of uh, procedures like Rao and Y and so forth. And based upon the type of procedure, the effects in terms of weight loss and improvement in diabetes uh, change. And it turns out that the incretin response is amplified when you surgically manipulate your intestines. And so you can have a full-blown type two diabetic who's morbidly obese, undergo bariatric surgery, and in the hours after surgery, they no longer need insulin. That's pretty profound. Now, why is that? It's because you're changing the orientation of the gastrointestinal tract and amplifying the so-called incretin response. And these incretin hormones are upstream from insulin and glucagon in terms of how they affect metabolic health. Some of the hormones that you've heard about, like ghrelin, we've heard about PYY, GLP-1, GIP-1, there's also GLP-2. There's a lot of different uh, hormones. But glucagon-like peptide 1 has been a sought-after target for a long time. And we're going to talk about how eating protein, chewing your food, exercising, and possibly botanicals, there's a lot of different botanicals, even curcumin, rosemary, berberine, these things, can also increase the release of this very important and sought-after GLP-1. And in so doing, can help with long-term 
weight maintenance. So that's where we're going. We're going to talk a little bit more about GLP-1 in just a moment. But as always, my friends, if you're enjoying the content, hit that like button. I would love to know where you're from. And if you're getting value from this and other videos, if you think you have a friend that can benefit from watching this, please share this video with them. I will link everything that we talk about in the show notes below. And since we're talking about metabolic health, I just want to, want to remind you about a tool that I've found very effective in my own life called berberine hydrochloride. Here's why I like it. It's been used in traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine for over 3,000 years. So there's hundreds of reviews over at myoscience.com. If you want to give this a try, I recommend taking three or two to three capsules with your last major meal at night as a way to kickstart your fast. You can also take it fasting in the morning. The only time you don't want to take berberine is immediately pre-workout because it has an effect on metabolic health by improving ketones, which I believe participates in its ability to help reduce your appetite and food cravings. So again, you can save by going to myoscience.com and use the code podcast at checkout. That's myoscience and use the code podcast. So getting back to GLP-1, glucagon-like peptide one. This is derived, as you can see from this image here, from the intestinal L cells. So remember, your gastrointestinal tract has kind of two jobs. Your, your GI tract wants to prevent bad stuff from coming in because remember, think about your gut. If you've ever vomited or had diarrhea, you only have this one single cell because your, your gut needs to absorb the nutrients that you eat, the micronutrients, the macronutrients, carbohydrates, fats, proteins, uh, even water. So your gut has a challenging job uh, because it's only one cell. This enterocyte is the only thing separating the internal compartment of your body from, again, vomit and poop. And it turns out that every five or so enterocytes, there's this specialized enterocyte, these uh, cells that comprise your, your gut, and these are called the L cells. These L cells release these increase in hormones that speak to and are upstream um, uh, to insulin. It turns out that these so-called incretin hormones play a crucial role in maintaining metabolic homeostasis since about 60 to 70% of the total postprandial insulin released into circulation is due to the action of these hormones. That's really important. 60 to 70% of insulin release is because of these gut hormones. So you can start to imagine now someone who's been eating hyperpalatable processed junk food, soda, sugar, their circadian rhythm is off. They're very stressed out. They're mindlessly eating. They're not exercising. They're insulin resistant in the post meal window. Now, many mainstream doctors for a lot of years were focusing on reducing the, the amount of insulin or injecting exogenous insulin to help, you know, renormalize blood sugar levels. But a better approach, and this was the thesis of belly fat effect, was going after the gut first, improving gut health by way of exercise, healthy whole foods, stress reduction, sleep, mindful eating, and so forth. Now, it's also important to know that GIP is another gut hormone, and there's also GLP-2. There's 26 of these. So many people are getting excited about one drug and one gut hormone. There's 26 that are very important. And that's the limitation of uh, supraphysiologic injectable drugs that are only one gut hormone, GLP-1, because you have 26, right? And, and GIP and GLP-1 collectively compromise about 40 and 60% of the entire incretin effect. So GIP is really important. And we're not getting that from a Zempec. And so just telling people that you should be on this forever without any education, I think is a little bit um, not a good idea. But it turns out that you can improve the number of these L cells that release GLP-1. So that's important take-home point number one. By just supporting gut health, you know, eating healthy whole foods, not being on antibiotics, not taking proton pump inhibitors, chewing your food mindfully between 30 and 50 chews per swallow is actually what investigators have found lead to the best in Cretan effect. And this means that you're going to have a greater you're going to have a much more efficient insulin glucose balance in the post meal window. So getting back to GLP-1, glucagon-like peptide 1 was initially identified as a gut-derived incretin hormone that augments insulin secretion in a glucose-dependent manner from pancreatic islet beta cells during the post-meal period. Subsequent research has discovered that GLP-1 also lowered glycemia by inhibiting glucagon secretion from pancreatic alpha cells, delaying gastric emptying, and mediating induction of satiety. So what's really cool about these gut hormones is they not only help with in insulin and glucose dynamics in the post meal, they also help you feel full and satiated and they affect um, gastric emptying, which I think is really important. So 
these have been long used in the context of type two diabetes. You know, people are all excited about Ozempic and everyone's talking about it. It's been used, my friends, uh, related compounds since 2005. I don't know all of a sudden why it's so exciting for people. This has been long used in type two diabetes. In fact, some of the earlier drugs were called DPP4 inhibitors. So there's a natural enzyme in your gut called DPP4 that will break down GLP-1. And so one way that scientists or you know, pharmaceutical companies were going after the so-called incretin effect was instead of injecting the actual hormone the, itself, they were slowing down the breakdown of this hormone. And so it turns out there's various whole foods. I don't have all the studies in front of me because I wrote it in the book, but many whole foods that actually slow down the breakdown of GLP-1. So when you eat a healthy whole food omnivorous diet, you actually slow down the breakdown of GLP-1 by inhibiting this DPP-4 enzyme. I remember fiber was one, uh, color rich uh, vegetables, like for example, orange bell peppers and blackberries and raspberries and blueberries, all these compounds, you know, just naturally are more satiating because of how they affect the gut hormones in this incretin effect. So I think that's important. But, you know, people get very excited about this because there's off target effects within skeletal muscle, within the immune system, within the adipose tissue, the fat tissue, within the brain. So, these, these gut hormones go everywhere. And so this is why everyone's so excited. Like, wow, we're seeing reductions in cardiovascular disease risk and improvements in memory and all these things. Well, okay, that's all ex that's very exciting, that is. But w in my opinion, what's even more exciting is we have natural things like exercise. You know why you don't feel hungry after exercise? is because exercise increases these gut hormones that make you feel like, wow, I feel good. I feel part of that is the endorphin release and endocannabinoids that are released from exercise. But another reason why you don't feel immediately hungry after exercise is because the gut hormones are amplified. So if you want to improve GLP-1 and GLP-2 and CCK and PYY and GIP, then you should probably exercise instead of spending 1200 bucks a month on just one hormone. I'm not saying that can't be a tool to accelerate your lifestyle change. I see the benefits here for some people, but I also think that we are always chasing quick fixes. You know, in the early 2000s, it was HCG. This is a hormone that mothers make during pregnancy to help prevent the immune system from attacking the fetus and so forth. And a lot of people were using this for weight loss. And it didn't, in my opinion, the data was never impressive, but it was costing people hundreds of dollars a month. They were taking HCG and doing 500 calorie diets. And then, you know, then keto came on, then fasting and this, and now we have Ozempic. And we're always looking for the next shiny object. But I, I don't think long-term that's the right solution for people. We should focus and double down on the basics. And I know it sounds simple and kind of boring, but when you look at people who maintain a healthy body composition over a long period of time, they're majoring in the majors, which is walking after meals, resistance training three to four days per week, doing some form of zone two training as well as high intensity interval training, eating about one gram of protein per kilogram of ideal body weight. You know, just doing basic things like that actually lead to long lasting effects without having to always chase these new shiny objects that are oftentimes very expensive. And so I just wanted to kind of share this with you and get you to realize that, hey, you can make Ozempec naturally. You don't need to inject this stuff, again, by just chewing your food. Being part of the cooking process, studies show when people smell the aromas of food and actually sit there and, and are part of the cooking process, it improves the cephalic phase of digestion as well as the gut, these gut hormones. And you know, your body is a hormone factory, right? We, we don't always need to always be searching for exogenous ways to inject these things. We can improve our own physiologic response uh, naturally. So exercise is a great way to do this. I remember one study found that chocolate polyphenols as well as blueberry polyphenols, as I mentioned already, protein and healthy fats, like having eggs and an avocado for breakfast is actually a good way to improve the release of these gut hormones. Going to the gym and doing some intense exercise will increase the levels of G GIP as well as GLP-1 post-meal. So we have a lot of natural ways to go about this, my friend. So I just wanted to give you a high-level overview. Hopefully you found these images and this paper and this narrative uh, context a little bit more helpful. Uh, again, not saying that these drugs can't be helpful for anyone. I, I do think there's a role for certain individuals, but I do want to remind you that 
you know, uh, I don't know that this is the best thing long term because there are a lot of downsides to super physiologic levels of any hormone chronically can be problematic. You know, whether that's testosterone, whether that's thyroid hormone, whether that's cortisol, um, and possibly these gut hormones. So I just think there's a lot of natural ways that we can uh, improve the release of these gut hormones that can lead to lasting effects in metabolic health as well as body composition. I would love to know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. I appreciate you watching all the way through and we'll catch you in a future video down the road.